Okay, everybody. So I've been asked a lot, what do I need to know before I go to Mongolia? So I've compiled a list of 20 things that you should know before going to Mongolia. Let's begin. Number one, be prepared for extremely long drives. At the shortest, you'll probably drive two or three hours. At the longest, you could drive nine or 10. It really depends on the day, on the weather, the terrain, and just the general kind of feeling of everybody in the car. Remember, you're probably gonna stop and take breaks along the way, bathroom breaks, cigarette breaks, stretching breaks, food breaks. So it's gonna really increase the length of the drive. Just be prepared to sit in your vehicle, whether it's the UAS or another van, for a long time. You have to really understand the drives are very long. Number two, be prepared to eat lots of meat. Almost every meal we had, except for breakfast, had some kind of meat in it, fried, boiled, or grilled. Uh, if meat is your thing, that's, that's fine, that's great. But if you're a vegetarian, this trip will be very difficult for you. And I suggest you do bring your own food. Number three, be prepared to sleep in the local gears. These are the local houses that you've seen them in my videos or other videos. They're these kind of round houses with like a, a, a triangular type roof and they are cold, cold at night and they can actually get pretty hot during the day as well. Uh, the truth is that it's really just kind of a, a, an enclosure. It's it, what you could call four walls and a roof. Um, in, in this case, it's one circular wall. Uh, they are open and exposed on the ground. You're walking just on the dirt or on the grass. Um, actually, in one of them, maybe we had that had the cement cover, but generally speaking, uh, these are mobile camps, mobile homes. And so uh, they kind of pitch them wherever they, they pitch their, their camp for that season or that time period. So be prepared. It gets cold in them, it gets hot in them, and your stuff is exposed to sometimes spiders or other things. Now, generally on my trip, it wasn't really a problem with insects or rodents. We didn't really see them, nor did we have any flies or mosquitoes. Uh, but you must know what kind of environments you'll be sleeping in. Number four, you will definitely want to bring moisture wicking clothes. For example, merino wool, which is absolutely my favorite. Now, it is more expensive, probably two to three times a synthetic shirt, but they don't smell. You can wear them two or three days in a row, then let them dry for a day and they're fine. Uh, yes, they'll get wet just like any other clothing if you're seriously sweating, but they'll evaporate that wetness and the smell won't carry over into your other items, into your bag. Now remember, there are virtually zero laundry facilities outside of the main city of Ulaanbaatar, which means that when you take your trip, you will not have access to laundry. There will be no freshwater streams where you could wash it yourself or give it to someone. Maybe in one or two camps, randomly somewhere, you will find some service, but remember that unless it's super hot, those clothes will not dry. And if you take wet clothing into your backpack, you spread mold and smell, and that's it. That's the end of your fresh clothing. Number five. This kind of touches upon number four, which is at some point throughout the trip, you will hit different environments and different temperatures, and you will end up sweating. With that being said, you won't have access to showers once or twice or even every day. Sometimes you'll go several days without a shower. For that reason, I recommend you bring wet wipes and take what we call a military shower, which means to use the wet wipes to clean your body. Because if you are kind of a, a clean, neat freak, uh, you will smell. And so it's best to just wipe under your armpits or other areas and uh, freshen up that way. So that, that's one way you can keep clean while on this trip. Number six, bring your own toilet paper. I don't think I have to explain too much about this, other than the fact that you may get stuck having to use the restroom somewhere where there won't be access to paper, meaning you're not in a restaurant or someone's house. And these outhouses that are available for you, they don't have toilet paper waiting. Everyone brings their own. So definitely carry your own. I recommend you take the paper core out and you fold it, you squeeze it because it takes up less space. It's not one big roll. It kind of compacts down and definitely one or two rolls. Of course, you will hit stores along the way so you can buy more, you don't have to pack 10 pieces, but one or two maximum before you start the trip is great. Number seven, this touches upon the last one, which is these outhouses. Be prepared to squat. These toilets, these outhouses, they're basically four walls and a roof. 
with a small crickety rackety door. In fact, one of the ones I used didn't even have a door. It just faced a big empty field. And uh, yeah, people could see you from very far away if they were out there or even close if they were in the general direction. But that being said, be prepared to squat. Very few, in fact, I think only one on my trip actually had a seat, which means you're squatting. You're going to the bathroom in a squat position. And if you're not used to that position, your legs will start to shake and hurt very fast. So do some squats, do some stretches. Uh, you'll definitely feel it. And it, it sounds kind of funny, but you will clearly understand what I mean from your very first time. Number eight, do not expect four star hotel level of comfort. Okay. When you go to these places, they'll tell you, you have charging. Sometimes it works. Sometimes it doesn't. If you're expecting super clean washed sheets and, uh, a pretty nice smell and flowers upon your arrival, you're not going to get that. Okay. These are mobile camps that the people live in for either weeks at a time, seasons at a time or years at a time. And then eventually they move. And so your level of comfort is very basic. You will have a mattress that's probably depressed, meaning it's got a hole or a kind of a depression in the middle. Um, your pillows will probably have been used by other people. So if that's something that kind of freaks you out, there's different ways uh, you can get around that, which is sleeping in sleeping bags, wearing hats while you sleep or putting a t-shirt on top of a pillow. There's different methods you can use to get around that if that's a little bit weird for you. Number nine, the dust and the heat or cold can be extremely difficult to deal with. If you are not used to traveling, hiking into mountains or taking long treks into the wilderness, this will be a challenge for you. And someone who has asthma like myself, it can be very difficult with the dust. So please definitely bring all of your inhalers, all of your asthma, antihistamine medicine, whatever it is you take and double up because you will not be able to buy this stuff along your trek. So bring more from home, make sure you have enough quantity to last your trip and then some in case you decide to extend or you get stuck for a day or two extra due to weather or road uh, issues. So plan forward and plan correctly. Number 10, the weather can be absolutely extreme, meaning hot to cold to rainy, all in the span of maybe five minutes to one day. So always be prepared. You're going to want to have quick access to your rain gear. You're going to want to have uh, clothing that you can kind of roll up into shorts and short sleeve shirts and back down into long clothing. And again, this is where the moisture wicking merino wool is perfect. Uh, generally, if you get hot, it tends to kind of get rid of that heat. And if you're cold, it kind of tends to keep that, that heat in. Um, but be prepared. The weather can be extreme in the span of five minutes. Always have access to your rain gear. Very important. Number 11, be prepared because most people will not speak English outside of Ulaanbaatar. And even then outside of the touristy restaurants or stores, you'll find very few people that speak English. Don't worry. Ultimately communication can be made, whether you're buying something or you want to ask for something, hand symbols or whatever can work. So it's not a big issue. Number 12, you will definitely have a horse or camel ride somewhere along your trek. Let me just tell you, if you've never ridden a camel before, it actually is quite difficult. You will definitely feel the pain in your lower back. You sit on them in a very wide stance. And for that reason, it can definitely be a little bit difficult. Also camels can be quite moody. So don't be surprised if he gives you a little growl or tries to bite at you, but keep in mind the same rules as when riding a horse, you should apply to when riding a camel. And the main one is don't walk behind them. They tend to kick people if they feel threatened for some reason when you're standing behind them. Number 13, if you're a vlogger or a photographer, be prepared to bring lots of batteries. I had three batteries for my main camera, six batteries for my GoPro and three batteries for my drone. And I always had a problem charging. They often tell you, you have charging ports or charging stations along the way, but honestly, everywhere you go, charge top up as much as possible. If you're 75% go to 90 because the charging stations are rare. In fact, I definitely suggest you bring a car charger, usually dual USB, or if you have a drone, they make those nice ones that plug into the cigarette lighter and then you can charge batteries. Definitely bring those because you should be charging in the car as well. Number 14, bring a travel pillow. You can purchase really nice, large size travel pillows that are inflatable from Amazon or from other sources. And they come like a normal size pillow you would have at your house or a miniature size, whatever your choice is. If you, if you're kind of weird about sharing pillows, 
this is definitely a great option and especially the pillows are usually really small and they feel like they've lost a life out of them and for that reason a travel pillow is a great idea number 15 be prepared to shower less and smell more there is nothing you can do about the fact that at some point you're going to get stinky other than use the wet wipes and take the military shower as i talked about earlier if you use merino wool clothing it won't smell as much there are other methods you can use as well, but don't bring bottles of cologne, perfume, or cans of Axe body spray. It won't do anything. What you can do is try to air out your clothing as much as possible when you're not using it, which means when you arrive to your gear camp and the weather is nice, sunny, open your door and try to put your clothing to hang over the side of it or on top of it or on a clothesline or whatever it is you can do. Sometimes you can attach it right to the roof of the gear because that will help get rid of some of the moisture and some of the smell. So there's definitely some methods you can do, but be prepared, you will be stinky on this trek. Number 16, bring activities to do during your downtime. I suggest you bring a book, a laptop with some movies on it, or music in your phone, or whatever it is, playing cards, whatever it is you wanna do, because you will definitely find yourself with lots of free time. Some of these gear camps are in the middle of nowhere and five meters around the gear camp is the same as the next 1,000 meters, which means that there's nothing to do, and once you've seen it, you've seen it, that's it. So definitely keep, bring something to keep your mind working, whether you wanna play Sudoku, whether you wanna read a book or watch a movie, it's up to you. Number 17, bring a quick drying towel. When you shower, the few times you're gonna, you don't wanna bring a big cotton towel that's gonna soak up moisture and take forever to dry. So bring a quick drying towel. REI sells a great one. I'm sure other outdoor stores sell really nice ones as well. I brought a medium size and it was awesome. It was great and it would dry in roughly about 15, 20 minutes and it came in a nice little stuff sack pouch. You just want to have your own towel. To be honest, I don't think I saw any showers, even when you could pay for them, that gave you a towel as well. So definitely bring your own and it should be quick drying. Number 18, bring a headlamp. There'll be many times at night where it gets dark or it's pitch black outside, the moon's not up so you can't see anything. You need to use the restroom, you need to go outside for a cigarette break or whatever it is you wanna do, take some photographs. That being said, bring a headlamp. I suggest the two-tone, two-color. They have a blue light and then a red light. And the red light's much softer on your eyes at nighttime when you've just woken up and you need to use the bathroom in the middle of the night. It's less invasive for your friends that are sleeping because they don't have to get woken up by a bright light hitting them. And also for you because you can easily fall asleep when it's a red light versus a blue light and suddenly your brain wakes up thinking it's daylight. So two-tone, red and blue, definitely the way to go. Number 19, bring an inflatable mattress. This touches upon an earlier subject. If you get grossed out by sharing beds with other people, there are people like that, we don't judge. You can put an inflatable mattress on top of the bed and then sleep inside your sleeping bag on top of that. I know it sounds a little bit ridiculous, but there are some people who just feel uncomfortable. So REI makes some really great ones. There's also some ones you can buy from other outdoor shops and they fold up and they don't weigh a lot. So it's another option for you to consider. And the final tip, number 20, always have cash. So along your trek, you're gonna wanna buy a souvenir, a snack, a bottle of water, or something extra during lunch or dinner, a can of Coke, whatever you want. Always carry cash. And definitely at the end of your trek, tip your guide because it's just the right thing to do. And you can tip them in your home currency if it's euro or dollars, if it's strange currency, maybe not because they might have trouble exchanging it, or in Mongolian money. Those are my top 20 tips. Good luck to you on your adventure and see you from the next destination.